a total meal of hundred dollars per person. Yes. Yeah. Right. All right. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the teaching that we're going to be dealing with today, it's a teaching that was sparked off by what happened uh, about a month ago, which is back in August. Um, let me know when you are. It's fine. Right. Um, in August, we heard that Hong Kong was under military occupation. Martial law, in other words. For the first time in ages, that country, because they're usually a, a very obedient and very subservient nation, they rose up, held sittings in the airport, costing the the, um, well, what's that thing that they measure all of the monies that come in and out? Um, treasury? The tre the, not the treasury, they've got another name for it. Um, mm -hmm. They call it the FTSE or the Dow Jones. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah something like that. Uh, the, 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 the stock exchange. The stock exchange. That, that was the word that I was, uh, I was missing. Okay. It costs mm -hmm. the stock exchange hundreds of millions of dollars per day. It made them get furious that they brought in tanks with music, triumphant music being played. They brought in rocket carriers. Now what do you do with rocket carriers? Then, watch what happens when they started to beat the people that several people lost eyes when their well, eyes were gouged out, and, so, and and many of them, their teeth were beaten, the teeth were beaten out of their heads because of what they were saying. And notice, America kept that news very quiet until a whistleblower blew it out. And that whistleblower who blew it out, he 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 put it out there on the World Wide Web. And that's why all the other countries picked it up and ran with it. America was trying to keep it quiet. Remember what Trump said. He said when when they had this uh, had some kind of altercation over there, where the, where the soldiers were very was very disciplined. Um, he said he liked the, the way that they dealt with it by beating beating up other people. That's right. Trump said all of that. So what it's showing you, ladies and gentlemen, that don't, don't get it twisted now that you know we're not seeing something happen. The world is starting to amp up. Right. Here's the other thing. It's been going on in, in Belgium, France, Portugal, right. the UK. Why the UK? Because everyone's mad about Brexit. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going uh, over there in a a couple of weeks time, and guess what? That they're, they're warning me ahead of, ahead of time. Pastor, when you come over here, the people aren't, aren't going to be the same. The people are, are feeling very kind of volatile. Mm. It's a sign of the times. So the teaching we're dealing with today, the title of this teaching is "Behold the Pale Horse." Behold the Pale horse. Let's go to the book of Luke chapter 21. Luke chapter 21, we're going to begin reading at verse 19. Let's read. The book of Luke chapter 21 and verse 19. In your patience possess ye your souls. Read it again. In your patience, possess ye your souls. Read on. And when ye shall see Jerusalem come past with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. So we see then that we have to recognize that we have to have patience because of what's about to kick off. 
Mm-hmm. Hold that. Go to Romans chapter 10, uh, 13 and 10. Romans chapter 13 and verse 10. It's the book of Romans chapter 13 and verse 10. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Love is what? Love is the fulfilling of the law. Love is the fulfilling of the law. So, you can't say that you love your neighbor or your sister and brother do not carry out the law. You, you have to be following the law, statutes, and his commandments. But it tells us, your patience possesses your soul. We're in a day and age where you are going to have to watch how you think and be careful because this is going to challenge every person in this room if you are determined to make it to the end. That's right. Let's go. In fact, um, uh, read 20 again before we go ahead. Luke chapter 21 and verse 20. And when ye shall see Jerusalem come past with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is not. So, so there is there is a desolation that's going to take place throughout the earth. We've already seen it once since 70 AD, and it's going to happen again, and it's going to affect everyone. Read on, verse 21. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let them which are in the midst of it. Depart out. So people are going to flee. They're going to run. Right. When all this kicks off. Jump to verse 22. Verse 22. For these be the days of vengeance. These be the days of what? These be the days of vengeance. Read. That all things which are written may be fulfilled. So we are living in the day and age where these things are going to be fulfilled. Yeah. You're going to see it. You're going to experience it. And some of us are going to be in a state where we become complacent. More unto you. Let's go to the book of Revelations. Chapter 6. And we're going to begin at verse 7. Now you're going to be, you're free to ask any questions as we go through this. Um, because it's going to get quite heavy. Chapter 6, begin at verse 7, let's go. The book of Revelation, chapter 6 and verse 7. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. So first of all, we must recognize, please make a note of this. The seals represents prophecy. The seals represent prophecy. Let's read it again, if you please. Revelation chapter 6, verse 7. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. All right, now what we must do, let's get a precept for let's go to Daniel chapter 12. We're coming back. Revelation is a book that we keep coming back to, so let's not drop that. We're going to go to the book of Daniel chapter 12. And we're going to read verse 4. Daniel chapter 12. If you have it, say I have it. And let's read verse 4. Let's read. Daniel chapter 12 and verse 4. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and. Stop. Read it again. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words. Shut up the words. Read. And seal the book. Read, say that again. And seal the book. Read. Even to the time of the end. So he's saying that this information that you have, Daniel, it's pertinent, but it's not for the people that are around now. This is like one of those Mission Impossible things, you know. Uh, the information is going to burn up in a moment, but it's only for your eyes. 
hear he is saying, shut up the book, seal it, because it's not for this particular time, but for a time at the end. Come. Read. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. So many shall run to and fro. So we're coming to the age where there's going to be this great um, abandoning of countries, a great migration of people going from one place to another. We're seeing it. The reason why people right now are not allowing it to affect them because the scripture said, woe unto he who sits at woe unto Zion, woe unto he who sits at ease in Zion. Mm -hmm. You're sitting at ease right now. Mm -hmm. You think it, it can't affect America. Mm -hmm. If you're thinking that, you are naive. Mm -hmm. You have to remember, and again, this is always a good uh, way to remember it. Some diseases don't start at a particular spot. Mm -hmm. They start in one area and then they creep towards central areas of the body. Come. Look at what's going on in South America right now. Mm -hmm. Do you really believe it's not going to touch America here? Mm -hmm. It's coming. It's kicking off down there. Look at what the people are doing. Many of them are, are, scatter, uh, are scattering and scuttle busting to get on top of boats and get on top of buses and top of trains. Have you seen the trains? Mm -hmm. People sit inside of trains. People have all their luggage and everything and then themselves on top of the train, right. traveling on top of the train at high speeds. That's mad. But they're doing it. Because everything to get out of the chaos where they are. And guess where they're, 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 they're heading to? Yeah. Right. Now, now, you see why the Most High God has set it up that even this talk about the war has been, has been so prevalent? Because the Most High God knew that I'm going to use this man and use him to start all of this caracas. Mm -hmm. And he's going to start it and make everybody get uncomfortable and this and the other. And now people are heading this way and look at they have blocked up the wall. They're, 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 they're soldiering it. All sorts of things are going on right now with certain things. Yes, yeah, right. And people are panicking. Look at what happened already. The so-called um, Mexicans that are here, by the way, in their own country, mm -hmm. have are now afraid to even go out as they did before. Yes. Is this not the fulfilling of the scriptures making Israel realize we can't rely on these people. We've got to rely on, on the hand of the Most High God. Yes. Wake up to who you are. Yes. Yes. So he's doing everything to wake up Israel. Whichever Israel you are, whether you be Ishaka, whether you be Gad, whether you be Judah, Benjamin, Levi, wake up. That's right. But let's read that again. Let's read Daniel again one more time. Let's read it. Daniel chapter 12 and verse 4. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book even to the time of the end. To the time of the end. Letting us know this wasn't to be revealed in his time. But this is what's being revealed now because it's affecting us now. Read on, sir. Finish it. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Knowledge shall be. Are we living in the day and age where knowledge has increased? Uh, yeah. now look what the uh, internet's done. Yeah, that's right. The internet has created people to have more knowledge because they can find it now. Libraries which was blocked off from certain information to certain groups of people, now you can get it. Is this not the age that knowledge has increased? No. Yes, it is. Is this not the last day? Yes, it is. Question. Um, would it be safe to say that um, those people who are leaving their country in South America and coming here, first of all, they're Israel, and the second of all, I'm asking, many of them are being killed and slaughtered. And mm -hmm. the, is that all part of the two birds that must die? Good question. That is a good question. 
question is, are many of the people who are leaving um, South and Central America to get to North America, are they Israel? And many who have died, are they part of the, of the two thirds? Well, the answer to that is yes. Oh. yes. All those that are dying off beforehand, yes, they are part of the two thirds. Because you see, we've been taught to see the scriptures from the eyes of our enemies That's who have taught you that this is going to be all spiritual. Mm -hmm. But it's happening right here and now before our eyes, naturally. We're seeing the two thirds drop off. But guess what? Because nobody's saying it, Nobody's really receiving it. No. But it's happening. Here's the other thing to bear in mind as well is this. That, uh, are they Israel? Some, maybe. Is it all? Not all, necessarily. Because some of them have to be destroyed. Some have to be destroyed. Some have to be taken out of the way. Did I see another hand? Uh, or, go ahead. Sir. Is that because, basically, uh, I thought about it. They serve it uh, Catholicism. So they're there. That's one reason that they're going to be taken out. Part of that, that, that's part of it because they've been serving a God that they have no business serving. They've been um, honoring rosary beads and doing right. the cross sign and all those things. And Israel has no business doing that. Yeah. Yes, of course it won't be taken out. Go ahead with your second part. I was thinking too, those that do make it through, they are making it through because Absolutely. Because America will be destroyed. Right. So they're running from death, but they're running to death. Right. Mm -hmm. So the question is, yes, many of them who are, who are escaping, they're leaving death only to find death on their way. That's right. Yes. Because remember, the scripture tells us that, that um, no matter where you run, mm -hmm. yeah. death will still find you. That's right. Yeah. Go ahead. So are you saying it's a cumulative effect? And if so, when did it start? Well, it, it is a cumulative effect, and uh, it's been going on since 70 AD. It hasn't stopped yet. And, but here's the thing, the scripture said, but it will wax great. I mean, it's gonna get worse and worse still. Did I say another hand? Okay, all right, let's continue. Let's go back. Revelation. Let's go back to the book of Revelation. Let's read it again. Revelation chapter 6 and verse 1. 6 and verse 1? Yeah. Revelation chapter 6 and verse 1. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard as it were the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. Come and see. With that, go to 2 Ezra chapter 9. 2 Ezra chapter 9. Let's begin at one. In the Apocrypha, 2nd Ezra, chapter 9 and verse 1. He answered me then and said, All right, just so that we can keep it in context, just jump back and read Revelation chapter um, 6 and 1, and then we're going to roll right into 2nd Ezra, chapter 9 and 1. Okay. So you can see the continuity of this. Revelation chapter 6 and verse 1. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seats, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. Second Ezra chapter 9 and verse 1. He answered me then and said, Measure thou the time diligently in itself. See, here's the answer. Got it? Read. And when thou seest part of the signs past, which I have told thee before, then shalt thou understand. So, so now, the times has passed. We're getting to a place of understanding, but watch what happens, read. That it is the very same time, wherein the highest will be, Salaki, will begin to visit the world which he made. See, so visit meaning his actions are being carried out. Read. Therefore, when there shall be seen earthly quakes and uproars of the people in the world, Look at just what happened to the Bahamas. Mm -hmm. Everything that's happening, people are taking it for granted. Stop. This is a sign letting you know 
that you better get yourself to get, listen, stop, and, and we haven't said it, but back home, go, stop mocking about. Hmm. Stop playing around. That's right. Get real with this thing. It's happening, but because it hasn't knocked on your door yet, you, you, you're acting like you still got time. God. Be careful. He may visit you another way. Mm -hmm. Read, sir. Verse 4. Then shalt thou well understand that the Most High spake of those things from the days that were before thee, even from the beginning. Even from the beginning. That's right. Read, sir. For like as all that is made in the world have a beginning and an end, and the end is manifest. Read. Even so, the times also of the heights have plain beginnings and wonders and powerful works and endings and effects and signs. And signs. Go back, if you please, and read Re Revelation chapter 6 and 1 one more time. Revelation chapter 6 verse 1. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard it, and I heard as it were the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. So, what we're looking at here, um, it ties in with Zechariah chapter 6 and 1, but let's go there, Revelation chapter 6 and 1, ties in with Zechariah chapter 6 and 1, but also you saw an explanation from 2nd Ezra chapter 9 and 1, right? You, you with me everyone? Very important that if you're not, tell me, I'll, I'll stay back for you who are, who are not with this because I want everybody to get this. Let's read Zechariah 6 and 1. Let's read. The book of Zechariah chapter 6 and verse 1. And I turned and lifted up mine eyes and looked and behold there came four chariots out from between two mountains. There came four chariots between what? Between two mountains. Two mountains. Go on. And the mountains were mountains of brass. Read. In the first chariot were red horses, and the second chariot black horses, and in the third chariot white horses, and in the fourth chariot grizzled and bay horses. All right, let's stop right there. Let's jump back to Revelation. The coming of Yahweh's power is seen throughout the earth. Esau has taken captivity of the royal diadem, which is his people, because Israel is his crown. This has progressed from the times biblically until the times that we're in right now. We, ladies and gentlemen, are living in the time of the pale horse. When we go back now and we read Revelation chapter 6, we're going to read verse 8. Revelation chapter 6 and verse 8. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was death. Was what? Was death. Was death. So, the pale horse represents what? Death. Death. Telling us right there. We just read it. And I looked and behold a pale horse. And his name that sat on him was death. Comma. So the pale horse represents death. The horse, ladies and gentlemen, is symbolical of spirit or spirits. The horse is symbolical of spirits. To get a better understanding of that, we need to go to 2 Kings chapter 2. And we're going to begin at verse 12. The book of 2 Kings chapter 2 and verse 12. And Elisha saw it, and he cried, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel, and the horsemen thereof. And he saw him no more, 
and he took hold of his own clothes and ripped them in two pieces. So, notice that he says the horsemen thereof. Mm -hmm. The horsemen represent power. Right? The power that it's also speaking about is, is a type of the chariots and those that are uh, controlling it. So, let's go to another version of it. Let's go to 2 Kings 6 and 16 to get an even better understanding. Let's read the book of 2 Kings chapter 6 and verse 16. And he answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. All right. So read on. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes. So there is a time that many of us, until we reach a certain level of spiritual maturity, you will always see your challenges as just challenges. And you'll always have a mentality of woe is me. What you must be clear as you grow in maturity that the very dangers that happen, the most I will open your eyes that you see more than the average person. And that's why it's important for men to get into their place. Because they're the slackers right now. Because they should have it together. They should be able to not just see just the, the surface of a thing, but see deeper. Hold on. When everyone's panicking, so hold on a moment. There's more to this than what we see. This is not just happening for happening's sake. Men need to be at a point where they can, they can sense that. The most is trying to tell us something, but we're not hearing it. We're seeing stuff, but we're not hearing it. Sometimes he shows you things to hear, but you're just concentrating on what you're seeing. That's why when we read it again from the top, read the 16th verse again. 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 16. And he answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. Now, he has to help this young man to see because he can't hear. Elisha didn't need to see it necessarily because in his spirit he can hear. That's why I, uh, one of the prophets told him, said, I can hear the sound of the abundance of rain. Do you remember that scripture? Because you have to learn to operate. To hear something is to hear from the invisible. Because every sound doesn't come by a, 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 a solid object. Sound comes invisibly. You don't see the words coming out of my mouth. You hear them. That's why words have a spiritual connotation to them. You have to learn to hear. What are you saying, Father? Help me to hear. And if I'm, and if I'm still in that lack of maturity, then help me to see. So he now says to him, Read 17 for me. Verse 17. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. That he may see. Because he can't hear. He's not at that spiritual level. Elisha he could hear what's going on. But then read on. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses. The mountains was filled with chariots. There were chariots all over. Now because, again, we have been taught by, from the eyes and the understandings of people who are not of us, we've been seeing it from their point of view. Oh, there were chariots. Hmm. So the chariots were saying it's horses and, and people in, you know, with a spear. But really, the chariots are speaking about are what the world calls today UFOs. Um that we call IFOs. Read. And he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire 
roundabout Elisha. So, so the chariot was 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 so on fire. In other words, the power that was coming from them that they sat there hovering, waiting for the word to be given, so they can send forth their lasers. Mm -hmm. Now you will say, what? Well, I've never read it, lasers in the scriptures. But you haven't been reading the scriptures. Because right here in the Apocrypha, it speaks of it. Oh. And so, ladies and gentlemen, he begins to see something. But read the next verse. Verse 18. And when they came down to him, Elisha prayed unto the Lord and said, Smite this people. So, you have to learn, ladies and gentlemen, to be able to say, destroy them in the name of Yahweh Bashi and Yahweh Shah. Yes. But guess what? You've been taught, love everybody. That's not what the scripture says. Yes. It's not what it says. It's not what it says. Yes. But it says, by loving your neighbor as yourself. The scripture tells us who your neighbor is. That's right. Your neighbor is those who are of the 12 tribes. It says so in black and white in the scriptures. Yeah. But I've never read it. Because you've never read your Bible. That's it. Hun, Come that's on. it. All right, now let's read on. Finish it for me. Smite this people, I pray thee, with blindness. And he smote them with blindness according to the word of Elisha. Now, the only way that happens is that you have to be on a certain spiritual level for the Most High to, to adhere to what you're saying. But many of our people were not at that spiritual level. Are you seeing that? Yes, sir. All right. So, it's opening up our eyes. So, first of all, what does pale mean? Death. Death. Good. So, what does horses mean? Spirit. Spirit and what else? Power. 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 Okay, let's let's uh, let's make that even clearer. Go to Ecclesiastes chapter ten and verse uh, six. Ecclesiastes chapter ten and verse six. Let's go. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter ten and verse six. Folly is set in great dignity. Read that again. Folly is set in great dignity. Folly is set in great dignity. Go on. And the rich sit in low place. And the what? And the rich sit in low place. Go on. I have seen servants upon horses. Hold it a moment. Hold it a cotton picking moment. What did it say? I have seen servants upon horses. And princes walking as servants upon the earth. Wow. So it says, I've seen servants upon horses. Mm. That means the ones who should be servants, they're now riding the horses. God. And the ones who should be the masters are the ones who are walking. How would that be? Huh? How did we get to the stage where the princes are walking and the servants are riding? When did that happen? Let's read it again. Let's, in case anyone thought we stuttered, let's read it again. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 6. Folly is set in great dignity, and the rich sit in low place. I have seen servants upon horses and princes walking as servants upon the earth. So we have to be mindful. Mm. You, you are operating in the wrong position. You've only been fooled into believing this is your lot, God. and it is not your lot. Not according to what we've just read. Mm, mm, mm. Um. Let's go, if you please, to Luke chapter 16 and 15. Luke 16 and 15. Yes, sir. Let's read. The book of Luke, chapter 16 and verse 15. And he said unto them, 
ye are they which justify yourselves before men. Read it one more time. And he said unto them, ye are they which justify yourselves before men. Read. But Yahweh knoweth your hearts, for that which is highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of Yahweh. Read. Verse 16. The law and the prophets were until John. Since that time, the kingdom of Yahweh is preached, and every man presses into it. Let's go back and read it again. Verse 16. The let's law. Let's go back and read from 15. Verse 15. And he said unto them, Ye are they which justify yourselves before men, but Yahweh knoweth your hearts. So. He knows our hearts, Son. but we're constantly trying to justify ourselves. But God knoweth our heart for that which is highly esteemed among men Son. is of no, as an abomination in the sight of Yahweh. Read. The law and the prophets were until John. Since that time, the kingdom of Yahweh is preached, and every man presses into it. Read. And it is easier for heaven and earth to pass than one tittle of the law to fail. So the law cannot fail. That's right. Otherwise, everything will be destroyed. And the law is based upon you because it was designed for you. Huh. And the law has to be fulfilled. Come on. Um. Wow. Revelations 2 and 9. The book of Revelation, chapter 2 and verse 9. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty but thou art rich, and I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Wow. I'm sorry, it's just, I'm reading this, it's kind of playing over my head a little bit here. I've got, to, I've got to go small study with this. This is heavy. All right. Let's go, if you please, to um, let's go to so, let's go to Ecclesiastes again. Just go to go back there one more time. Chapter ten, read verse seven. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 7. I have seen servants upon horses and princes walking as servants upon the earth. So so the, the, the ones who are really rich are the ones that are walking. Mm -hmm. and, and the ones that are really poor are the ones on the horses. Yeah. It makes no sense really, does it? No, no. no sense. Okay, Ecclesiastes, uh, no, let's go to, let's, let's, let's jump ahead of that, because I, I, I think I might have to go back into some more studies on that. Let's go to Sorak at this moment. Sorak chapter 39. 39? Yes. There's a whole lot more meat in that. Mm -hmm. All right. Sorak 39 and 28. Okay. In the Apocrypha, Ecclesiasticus, known as Sorak, Chapter 39, verse 28. There be spirits that are created for vengeance, which in their fury lay on sore strokes. In the time of destruction, they pour out their force and appease the wrath of him that made them. So, first and foremost, we have to understand that there is no such thing as mother nature. Again, we've been taught these languages and these words by Esau. That's right. 
There is no such thing as mother nature. So if there's no such thing as mother nature, it means then that there has to be one who is in charge of everything. The father is the one who made everything to his will and to his likeness. So he tells us, as we read in Sorak 39 and 28, he says, there be spirits that are created for vengeance. So, meaning, in other words, certain things, although we see them as normal, he created them to also have a destructive arm to them as well. What was the destructive arm? To bring decimation to things or countries or places that he wants to bring under uh, submission. Come. So he says, which in their fury mm -hmm. lay on sore strokes. Read. In the time of destruction, they pour out their force and appease the wrath of him that made them. And do what? And appease the wrath of him that made them. And appease the wrath of him that made them. Come. Now, in case some of you may be struggling with this, we'll, we'll, we'll touch this now, but we're going to come back and read it later in, in with more detail. Read verse 29. Verse 29. Fire. So, he says fire is part of the destructive forces that he has made. So when you have been uh, all aghast what's been going on in California with the forest fires, Yahweh is making that happen. That's right. He's making those fires happen. Read. And hell. When you read a few months ago about a gigantic hell co coming down over in China, like tennis balls, not golf balls, like tennis balls, killing hundreds of people, which, uh, by the way, you notice the American news didn't uh, push that too hard. Come. Read on. And famine. And famine. So. Famine now is something you, you and I need to pay particular attention to because he's been using that already and you know what? The nations are not taking heed. Some of the countries are starving. They're hungry. Mm -hmm. Before we even deal with South America, look what's going on over, over in Europe. That's right. They have now got internment camps where people are starving. They don't have enough food to feed the people. Yeah. Look what happened just a little while ago in some of those internment camps on, uh, uh, that they were holding uh, the Mexican people in. Yeah. They were not getting enough food, That's right. they were not getting en enough clothing, mm -hmm. medicines, and children were dying. Yeah. Uh, what is it going to take for our people to wake up and realize this thing is happening? Yeah. Yeah. Is it because it hasn't happened to you while you're, you're sitting at ease? It's happening and it's going to come knocking on your door real soon if you don't shape up. That's right. Let's, let's move along just for a little bit. Second Maccabees. I want to show you something because some of you say, well, God doesn't do that. He's a loving God. He loves everybody. We just read where he said that he hated few folk. In fact, it said that he hated the sinner. Oh. We read that in the opening text we read. Right. He said he hates the sinner. He loves the sinner. Mm -hmm. That's what he does. And we read where the scripture says he hates. Did, ladies and gentlemen, did we not read this? Or yes, we did. We did. Oh. Oh. Because when we're on the street, we have people say, well, he, 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 he hates the sin, but he loves the sinner. Yes. No, he doesn't. Right. He, he hates all the above. You have a question? Pastor, just to answer what you're saying, anytime there's a famine, that's the father he calls for that. Because back in uh, during the time when Joseph was in ancient Mizraim, he has those, those were his very words. The, the Lord has called for a famine. Correct. Famine is part of his tool. That's right. All right, let's go to 2 Maccabees chapter 3, and verse 24. Watch this now. Some of you might have read it, some of you haven't You've read it as yet. Second Maccabees chapter 3. Um, let's begin at verse 24. 
Second Maccabees chapter 3 and verse 24. And I'm going to let you explain it. Go ahead. Now, as he was there present himself with his guard about the treasury. Wait, so he's with his guards about the treasury. Because you know how folk like, I'm going to go see what my money's doing now. But go and read. The Lord of Spirits. The Lord of Spirits. Yahweh. Read. And the Prince of all power. And the Prince of all power. Yahweh Yahweh Shai. Read. Caused a great. So like, caused a great apparition. apparition. So that all that presumed to come in with him were astonished at the power of Yahweh. So the they saw something like a vision, but it wasn't a vision. It was an apparition. Read. And fainted, and were so afraid. For there appeared unto them, and horse with a terrible rider upon him. So, see, remember, we just learned that horses means power, mm -hmm. means authority. Go on. And adorned with a very fair cover. So, the, so, this particular chariot looked absolutely beautiful. Go on. And he ran fiercely and smote at Her Herodias with his forefeet. And it seemed that he that sat upon the horse had complete harness of gold. Read. Moreover, two other young men appeared before him. Now, so now we see that there's a first who is on a horse that's been decked out beautifully and now two other turn up now he explains what they're like read notable in strength excellent in beauty so they were beautiful men all right okay now okay go on read on and comely in apparel Commonly in terms of how to address, read. Who stood by him on either side, read. And scourged him, and did what? And scourged him, read. Continually. So, what's happening here, ladies and gentlemen? Be a bit louder for me. I'm an old man now. I'm getting deaf, so. Okay, that's what you, that's what you see, all right? Anyone else? Come on, sisters. Go ahead. Remember, I'm an old man. I can't hear like I'm good, so. Speak louder. Yahweh Say it again. Yahweh being beaten and scores and strikes. Yahweh being beaten and scores and strikes. Yahweh being beaten. Okay. Anyone else? You got it? So you got the answer? Oh, okay. All right. Oh, I, I, I'm, about to, I'm about to get all excited for a minute. All right, so let's break it down. From the top. Now, the reason why I have to do it like this is because this is a learning uh, um, church here. So let's read it from the top. Second Maccabees chapter 3, verse 24. Now as he was, they are present with himself. With his guard about the treasure, the Lord of Spirits. The Lord of Spirits, so this is Yahweh Shai, go on. And the Prince of all power caused a great apparition, so that all that presumed to come in with him were astonished at the power of Yahweh. So and they saw an apparition, mm -hmm. he made it so, go on. And fainted, and, and were sore afraid. For there appeared unto them and horse with a terrible rider upon him. So, so there was a horse, a, a beautiful horse, decked out in gold, shows his authority, and there's a man on it who's decked out also, beautiful in appearance, comely in terms of his dress, and this man now is 
It's, it's riding up and down. Read. And adorned with a very fair cover. And he ran fiercely and smote at Helodrius with his forefeet. And so he smote him. Mm -hmm. So he hit him. All right. Mm -hmm. So as he hit him, um, then it, 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 uh, and with his forefeet, mm -hmm. and it seemed that he that sat upon the horse had what? Complete harness of gold. Everything was in precious metals. Go on. Moreover, two other young men appeared before him, notable in strength, excellent in beauty, and comely in apparel, who stood by him on either side, Read. and scourged him continually. So, this person was being whipped. Angels are whipping and scourging a person. Read verse 27. Verse 27. And Helodrius fell suddenly unto the ground, and was compassed with great darkness. But they that were with him took him up, and put him into a litter. So they weren't seeing what was happening to him, because in the spirit realm now, they... These, these angels were scorching and whipping and giving this man a beat down. Mm. And they're wondering, what's, what's going on with him? But they could just see his body convulsing with, with, the, with the hits. Read on. But they that were with him took him up and put him into a litter. Thus him that lately came with a great train and with all his guard into into the said treasury they carried out, being unable to help himself with his weapons, and manifestly they acknowledged the power of Yahweh. So they knew that and these angels came and beat on this man, showing you that the Most High can use his angel to do whatever he wants them to do, whenever he needs them to do it. And this man was being beaten down. Notice, they could have killed him, but that wasn't their assignment. Their assignment was only to beat him within an inch of his life so he would recognize that there's a greater power than he. Because remember, that, that's how men who are in power act. They act like nothing can touch them. Don't you, don't you see that's what's going on with, with, the, with the president right now? He does not believe no one can touch him. He's untouchable. Yeah, he's talking about he's a chosen one. But guess what? He'll be chosen one. Let's go to the book of Psalms, chapter 68. Psalm 68. Psalm 68, let's hit verse 20. Let's the, read. The book of Psalms, chapter 68, and verse 20. He that is our Yahweh is the Yahweh of salvation. Read it again. He that is our Yahweh is the Yahweh of salvation. Read. And unto Yahweh, the Most High, belong the issues from death. So, it's telling you clearly here that a person cannot get away with anything of themselves. He that is our God is the God of salvation. And unto, unto God, the Lord, belong the issues of death. So that lets you know, ladies and gentlemen, nobody dies unless it has been sanctioned by the Almighty. Every single person that dies, if, listen, if you are walking down the road and something fell from up high and hit you on the head and killed you, that was God who killed you. Right. It wasn't the devil. And some people tried to make a peace with it say it was an accident. It wasn't an accident. It was the Most High God who wanted to kill you. That's it. When anything happens to us, physically, mentally, or, or um, physical, physically, or mentally, or, or in your spirit, it happens because the Most High God sanctioned it to happen. That's hard for us to even receive right there. Because you've been told, oh, he's a loving God, he just loves a God. That's not true. 
It's not true. And even now, some of you may be struggling with it. Oh, I don't know why I can take too much of this teaching. It doesn't matter. Because you're not going to be counted anyway. Let's, let's hit that a moment. Go to First Peter's um, chapter four and seventeen, just real quick. Let's, let's, let's back that up with a precept. Psalms, um, uh, what did I say? Psalms Psalm 68. sixty-eight, yeah, twenty. Go ahead. The book of First Peter, chapter four and verse seventeen. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. Oh, so where does it say judgment begins? House of God. So if it begins in the house of the Most High God, that means that you're going to be punished in the house of the Most High God. That's right. Finish it. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? Wow. So if you don't obey the gospel of the Most High God, you think you stand a chance? No, sir. You don't stand an earthly chance here. That's right. Let's go to Sorak, chapter 39. <coughs> go ahead and read when you got it. 39, what verse? Uh, 39 and 29. Okay. Sorak, chapter 39, verse 29. Fire and hail and famine and death, all these were created for vengeance. So, all of them, those things, are for vengeance. Right. Let's read what else? Read. Teeth of wild beasts and scorpions of serpents and the, and the sword, punishing the wicked to destruction. So tell me, when you get bit by a snake and you die, do you, was that just a, a wild accident? Come on, talk back to me, people. No. no. So why did it happen? Because God, I'm sorry. I, 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 hold it. Good to see some hands every now and then. All right, go ahead, Elizabeth. You know, it's, you, <laughs> what? It was sanctioned by the Most High God. God. Now, does that not make you see things differently? To know now that anything that happens, you realize. It just didn't happen out of the blue, That's right. but it happened because he made it happen. You see, when you come from Christianity and you start getting this type of thing, it, it just bends your mind up because you, but I've been told there's a loving God is. Mm -hmm. But that's not what the scripture is saying. That's right. So when a wild beast tears you apart, is that the act of God? No, yes. It is. Can we handle this, ladies and gentlemen? <coughs> now, let me ask you this, by the way. Does, is there such a thing as a, um, a disobedient angel? <coughs> Tell me why. All right, so you, you seem to be, look like you're on, on two opinions. Uh, let me hear why. Okay, no, I'm going to pick on you now. Yeah, no, that's not, I'm trying to confuse him, trying to, you know, figure out it. Is there such a thing as a disobedient angel? Um, I would say no, only because Satan, or, you know, the, the bad, the, the bad angel on the left, he, uh, he carries out the will of the Father. So if he carries out the will of the Father, that means that he has to get permission. So if he don't get permission, that means... There is no such thing as, as a disobedient angel. Christianity has told us that there is. But the scripture doesn't say that. That's right. Because angels that carry out evil acts, they carry it out because they were designed to do that. That's right. There is balance in the kingdom of heaven. So if there happens to be good, that they, they will be bad. If there happens to be a right, there will be a left. Okay. If there's an up, there's a down. If there's a black, there's a white. And by the way, these, those angels that we were just reading about, these, those angels didn't look like uh, Caucasian people. 
And yet the scripture says that they were beautiful in their appearance. But yet you'll never read that. Well, show me in the Bible where it says angels are not white. Who can tell me? Where is in the where it is in the scriptures where it told you what the actual look of angels look like? Who can tell me? We're digressing just for a minute. Who can tell me? Wendell, what you got? seen that. I know it's in the Apocrypha, I think. Uh, mm -hmm. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, I think it's in Ezra. Because the, the places where the angels, right. are angels. A anyone else over this side? Go ahead. I don't know how, what, how the angels look like, but uh, why does the Bible say that Jesus said that he saw Satan falling like the lightning from heaven? Right. And because was disobedient or why was he falling down? Right. Now, for those who are listening on the internet, your the question is, why then did, did Jesus say that he saw Satan like lightning fall from heaven? What that was speaking about was not literally Satan as in Satan as you know him. It was speaking about a, a, a group or a race of people that are the characteristics of Satan who fell from their mighty height of their position of government of power. So that's what it was speaking about. When he said, I saw Satan fall from heaven, he's speaking about the people who are now controlled, or, or Satan controls a, group, a race of people, they're going to fall from their lofty place of power. And they will fall like lightning, meaning it will be, it, when they lose their power, it will be just like that. That's what he was speaking about. But you see, uh, many who come from Catholic, Roman Catholic, or Christianity, they get taught that Satan came down from heaven. But that's not true, not according to the scriptures. But that's a good question. But let me now prove the point about the angel. Go to Ezekiel chapter 1. Book of Ezekiel chapter 1. So, so kind of chronicle that in, in, your, in your minds. Uh, uh, Ezekiel chapter 1. And let's see if you can find it from there. One thirteen. Thirteen. All right, let's read. Ezekiel chapter 1, verse 13. As for the likeness of the living creatures. So, the likeness of the living creatures, read. Their appearance was like... Hold it. It says, their appearance. Appearance is speaking about looks. Read. Their appearance was like burning coals. Burning coals. So these angels look like burning coals. Oh, this was just one group of angels. Shut up. Read on. Of fire and like the appearance of lamps. See, so it's saying that they are burning coals of fire. Their burning coals is a black thing. The, the, what, when it uses the word, just to help those who want to learn, their appearance was like burning coals of fire. Why? Because they, they, they illuminated. It's like, I'm a pretty dark skinned man. Imagine me illuminating that it looks like fire's coming off of me. Read. It went up and down. It went back the fire and like the and appearance. Like the appearance of lamps. Of lamps. Because what does lamps do? What does lamps do? They shine. Huh? They, give light. they give light or they glow. Read. It went up and down among the living creatures. Read. And the fire was bright. Read. And out of the fire went forth lightning. Went forth lightning. Read on. And the living creatures ran and returned as the appearance of a flash of lightning. And shows you how quickly they moved. How quickly they moved. Then, as you read on, it goes into uh, uh, the, 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 the different groups and types because of angels, because they they have the anyway. That that's what it goes into. So, does that make sense to you so far? Yes. Uh, huh? Uh. Now, in case any, anyone's having some trouble here, because. I'm very aware that every now and then people have trouble because they're going to, you know, say, well, you know, 
John, sh sh no, I, I, I'm just still not convinced. All right, Psalms 78 and verse 49, please. Psalm 78. Go back to um, actually verse 7 on uh, Ezekiel. You got the burning bread. Yes, we'll, 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 we'll jump back there. But go ahead. So what did I say? Psalm 78. And verse 49. Okay. Let's read. The book of Psalms, chapter 78 and verse 49. He cast upon them the fierceness of his anger, wrath, and indignation, and trouble by sending evil angels it, among them. Evil, sending evil angels among them. So there are evil angels. Their job is to carry out evil acts. Okay. That's what their job is to do. But they are obedient to the Most High God. All right? And let's just quickly go back to Ezekiel chapter 1, and let's go back to verse 7. Ezekiel chapter 1 and verse 7. And their feet were straight feet, and their sole of their feet was like the sole of a calf's foot, and they sparkled like the color of burnished they did brass. What? And they sparkled like the color of burnished brass. All right, so they, they, they sparkle like the color of burnished brass, right? Uh, and what color is brass? Brown. 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 All right. So, so that's letting us know uh, what their, their, the, the, the color is, so, so to speak, right? So one would turn around and say, well, that, what does that got to do with? Well, you've got to read then Daniel chapter 7. And the verse 9. The book of Daniel, chapter 7, and verse 9. I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the ancient of days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and his hair of his head like the pure wool. Like the pure wool. Is that what it says? Come. So and that's making some, that should, that should make some clarity to some of us here, right? Yes, sir. Read on. In fact, just we'll leave it there. Um, if anyone who wants to check it for themselves, you can read on and get the rest. But I, I think I've made my point. That angels aren't what people think they are. And they're certainly not baby angels with an arrow. Right. Question? Go ahead. Yes, right. So, Jude 1 and 6, when it talks about the fallen angels, that being earthly angels, right. what's the description? The, the, What's Jude, Jude 1 and 6 is only dealing with Israel. Yeah, right, because it, we, we as Israel, we've lost our estate. Our estate was once in the heavenlies. We had, we had the best of everything. And our heaven was on earth. But when you fall, it's like when someone falls out of uh, out, out, out of grace or falls out of their position, you say, oh, it's a mighty fallen because he used to live in that palace, he used to live in that nice house, Jay-Z used to drive this car, but he's fallen from his heaven. It's that type of expression. So when in Jude it, it speaks about the fallen angels, it's speaking about us, we were, we were like angelic light because of the fact that we lived in the best of what the earth offered. But when we fell from it because of sin, because of breaking his law, statutes, and commandments, we now have become the lowest. That means that, that the world then can run right over us and we, we can un only follow. All right? Now, being trapped in what bodies? Trapped in the bodies, that Jude goes on to say, because of the fact that we don't have no, we have no supernatural power. We don't have any of that. All right? Yes. Okay. Now, go ahead. I, I just came to mind to me. Yeah, how was shot in Revelation 1, 15 says that he had feet like bronze for Correct, yes. And the only reason why I didn't, I didn't go to that because um, the only reason why I didn't go to that was because I didn't want to, because uh, I could have made it more plainly because of the fact that um, what Daniel chapter 1 and 7 and 13 and, I'm sorry, Ezekiel chapter 1 and 7 and 13 and Daniel chapter 7 and then Revelations chapter uh, 1 and 14 down, it tells us all of that. 
You see, there's just so much proof in the scriptures as to what the colors of the angels were like and what the color of Yahweh who the world who is Jesus is like. But um, our people, we have been so brainwashed that even when someone like myself or other, other camp leaders are teaching, people struggle with it because we've been taught not to believe ourselves to be like anything great. We've been taught that. But we need to understand that we, we are great. Whether we like it or not, we are rich. Whether we have it now or not, that's what we are. That's why in, in, in the scripture says that, that I, I, I know thy, uh, thy tribulation, but thou art rich. Meaning, even though we've gone through a whole lot, but we're really rich, but we're, we're just not there yet. Yeah. We're, 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 we're struggling right now. But our people find that hard because I needed to say categorically, uh, and then you'll get some those who come from Christianity say, so read the whole chapter, read the whole chapter. No. The Bible teaches that you have to take here a little and there a little. Precept must be upon precept, line upon line. But because that they, uh, they believe what their enemy has taught them, mm. they don't want now to believe their own brothers. How can they believe their own brothers when they have been conditioned to kill their own brothers? We'll kill our own brother before we go and kill someone of another nation. That's right. It tells you how mentally screwed up we are as a people. We're really messed up. A black woman would tear another black woman's eyes out and be slow to want to, want to fight to this woman. With this one now, yeah, that's what we've been taught. And we're quick to cuss one another out more than we do the, 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 the other nations. That's right. And by the way, the gay people think that just black, that's with all. All of us are all 12 tribes. We've been conditioned. It's, it's sad, but that's where we are. We've been conditioned to hate one another and not look at one another with love. That's just who we are. But that's going to change according to the book. All right, let, let's get back on track. All right, so let's go back to Revelation chapter six and eight, please. Six and eight. Let's read the book of Revelation, chapter six and verse eight. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was Death, and Hell followed with him, and power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth, to kill with sword and with hunger and with death and with the beast of the earth. Explain that, please. Explain it. And I looked and behold a pale horse, his name that was and the name that sat on him was death, mm -hmm. and hell followed with him, and power was given. All right, make a note of this. Let's go to this, number one. We are in the fourth seal. We are in the fourth seal now. The fifth seal, is yet to come. That will be the time of Jacob's trouble. The sixth seal is total destruction. The seventh seal is the millennial church age where Yahweh shines will reign. But you can see the seals are being unleashed to us. Death and hell deals with Shoal, which is the grave. Make a note, that's why I'm, I'm saying it slow like I am, so that you can make notes, all right? It says power was given. Who gave the power? So who, who gave it? The Most, High. the Most High gave the power. He gave the power. And then it says, 
He gained the power, and power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth. The fourth part, four in biblical numerology, deals with order or creation. Four in biblical numerology means order or creation. Let's prove it. There are four elements. What are the four elements? Earth, air, fire, water. There are four directions. North, south, east, and west. There are four seasons, spring, summer, fall, and winter. There are four divisions of the day, morning, noon, evening, midnight. Well, what, why is midnight? Because midnight is the point between going from one day to another, or part of the night, hence midnight. So that, that gives you that understanding. Now the fourth part of the earth is in four parts. Back in the time of Yahawashai, there was what is called, uh, uh, in fact it was uh, Africa first, followed by Asia, or followed by Africa, then Europe, then Africa, then Asia. Africa, Europe, then Asia. You with me so far? Yes, sir. And then the fourth part of that was the Americas. So that's the four parts of the Earth. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. All right. If it does, now I'm going to have you explain it to me. All right, four parts of the earth, beginning with yourself, Ernest, break it down. Four, de four parts of the earth, go on. Ernest? All right, you got some help there. Okay, our sister. Break down the four divisions in terms of directions. Wanda? North, south, east, and west. All right. North, south, east, and west. Okay. Uh, yes. You're looking at me. Very good. Um, four parts of the day. If anyone helps, I'm going to jump on you. So you've got morning, evening, midnight. What's the last one? Wrong order, but what's the last one? So then it would be morning, evening, midnight, night. No, there's something that takes place before you get to evening. Morning. Midday, which we call what? Noon. Mm. Right? But midday is perfectly fine. Then what? Evening and midnight. In, good. Well done. All right. Four seasons. Um, clear. Summer. I mean, winter. Do you need them in order? Just need them. Winter, spring, summer, and fall. Well, if you're going to bring the song into it, that's all right. <laughs> okay. All right, brother Johnny. Yes, sir. Four elements. Four elements: is earth, air, fire, water. Excellent. Good. So we've got that then, right? Yes, sir. All right. Let's go to Ezekiel chapter seven and twenty-five. Because it mentions kill with a sword, we need to break that down. Ezekiel 7, Ezekiel 7 and 25. Because the scripture says, and power was given uh, of the four parts of the earth to kill with sword. Let's read. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 7, verse 25. Destruction cometh 
and they shall seek peace, and there shall be none. Read it again. Destruction cometh, and they shall seek peace, and there shall be none. Destruction comes. So destruction comes by way of the sword. Just read the next verse for me. Mischief shall come upon mischief. What is mischief? What is mischief, everyone? Uh, 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 we shouldn't even be thinking about it. We should know what that is. What is mischief, please? Devious. Just one individual at a time. Go ahead, um, go ahead, Ernest. Mischief, all right. Window, mischief. Mischief is when people are doing things behind the scenes that you don't see. In, in, uh, Correct. In order to get stuff in order to do. Good, all right, read on for me. Mischief shall come upon mischief, and rumor shall be upon rumor. Then shall they seek a vision of the prophet. Read. But the law shall perish from the priest, and the counsel from the ancients. Read on. The king shall mourn, and the prince shall be clothed in desolation, and the hands of the people of the land shall be troubled. I will do unto them after their way, and according to their deserts will I judge them. And they shall know that I am the most high. Let's go to Matthew chapter 24 and 6. Matthew 24 and 6. Read. Matthew chapter 24 and verse 6. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See? See hold it. Notice what we just read in Ezekiel. Okay. Make the correlation. Try not to just read. And then we just kind of miss it because it, it's giving us up the, the points of reference there. So what we have here is now saying to us, um, read it again for me, please. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. And rumors of war. Okay. Go back to Ezekiel and let's, let's read what that says. Ezekiel chapter 7 verse 25. Five. Destruction cometh and they shall seek peace and there shall be none. Mischief shall come upon mischief, Great. and rumor shall be upon rumor. Then shall they seek a vision of the prophet. All right, let's go back. Matthew chapter 24 and verse 6. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. Great. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. Great. But the end is not yet. So even though we're seeing these things happen, okay. even though we're seeing the beginnings of the gray, of, of, sorry, of the pale horse. Notice, it's not yet the end, but he's, he's showing us this so we can begin to prepare ourselves. Okay. You need to prepare. Read on. Verse seven. For a nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines, pestilences. Notice the word famine. Right. Pestilences. These are things that are used to as weapons of destruction. Read on. And earthquakes in the in, 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 like, in diverse places. In diverse places. Read. All of these are the beginning of sorrow. These are the things that we're seeing. It's leading us up to what's called Jacob's trouble. That's right. Going to be very heavy, ladies and gentlemen. Jacob's trouble is going to come, and you're going to find your your relationships are going to start to, and, and you're going to have to stay strong because you're going to have to be the visionary, the shepherd, the leader. Did, are you got your finger up? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Because I kept, I I never did get all the I got the, the seals, the uh, the six and seven seals. Six was destruction. Can't help you there. We've gone too far to go back there. Oh, okay. All right. Um, get checked with one of the brothers afterwards. Okay. That's why I always say, is there any question? Because I want to make sure that you, you get it, but what, what you're asking is way too far back. All right, read, read it again, please. Verse, <clears throat> verse 8, or verse 7. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There shall be famines and pestilences 
and earthquakes in diverse places. Let's go now to Ed, Second Ezra chapter 15. Second Ezra chapter 15. Now we're going to get you know, detail. Go ahead. Let's begin at verse 56. Second Ezra chapter 15 and verse 56. Like as thou hast done unto my chosen, saith the Most High. So what you did to my chosen, read. Even so shall Yahweh do unto thee. So the same things that you did to my chosen people, I'm going to do to you, read. And shall deliver thee into mischief. So here's that word mischief again. I'm going to deliver you into trouble beyond your wildest imagination. Read. Thy children shall die of hunger. And your children are going to die of hunger. Are you seeing that? Uh, Read on. And thou shalt fail, Salaki. Thou shalt fall through the sword. Thy city shall be broken down. Read 57 again. Thy children shall die of hunger. And thou shalt fall through the sword. Read. Thy city shall be broken down. Read. And all thine shall perish with the sword in the field. See, so it's confirming what we just read in the book of Revelations chapter 6 and verse 8, which says, And I look and behold the pale horse, and the name of he that was on it was death and hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword and with hunger and with death and with the beasts of the earth. Fourth part of the earth is telling you that all of this is going to take place in the Americas. Which America? South America. Is it started in South America? All this is happening, yes, in South America it has happened, and it's moving this way. Yes, it is. It's moving this way. Yeah. All these things are starting to happen. Let's go to stay in the same Ezra. Let's go to um, chapter 16 and 1. Second Ezra, chapter 16 and verse 1. Woe be unto thee, Babylon and Asia. Woe be unto thee. So notice it's telling you the countries that's going to have, the word woe means destruction, means war. Uh. He's telling you ahead of time the countries that I'm going to wage war against. So when, although we know that's going to happen in the America, which is the fourth part, it's also telling us the other nations who are not going to escape the situation. Woe unto thee, what? Babylon. Babylon. And what? Asia. And Asia. And Asia. Woe be unto thee, Egypt, Read. and Syria. Read. Gird up yourselves with cloths of sack and hair. Bewail your children, and be sorry, for your destruction is at hand. Read. A sword is sent upon you. There's the word sword again. Read. And who may turn it back? A fire is sent upon you. And who may quench it? Read. Plagues are sent unto you. And notice that... There were certain children that held in these in, 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 um, these camps where they are suffering with plagues that they shouldn't really suffer in this day and age. No. The scripture's fulfilling itself, but we're not recognizing it. Why? Because we're not reading the book. No. Read. Plagues are sent unto you, and what is he that may drive them away? Read. May any man drive away an hungry lion in the wood. Or may anyone quench the fire and stubble when it hath begun to burn. Read. May one turn again the sorrow, Salaki, the, again the arrow that is shot of a strong archer. Read. The mighty Most High sendeth the plagues, and who is he that can drive them away? Read. A fire shall go forth from his wrath, and who is he that may quench it? Read. He shall cast lightnings. And who shall not fear? He shall thunder, and who shall not be afraid? The Most High shall threaten, and who shall not be utterly beaten to powder at his presence? Read. The earth quaking, and the foundations thereof. The sea ariseth up with waves from the deep, 
and the ways of it are troubled, and the fishes thereof also before the Most High, and before the glory of his power. Read. For strong is right hand that, that bendeth the bow, his arrows that shooteth are sharp. So he's the one who's going to make all the things shoot off and happen. Come. He's the one who's going to do it. Explain to me, um, Brother Window, why um, all this is going to happen. This is taking place because as we move into the time of the end, it's coming, getting close to the point where we're going to be set free from this place. And it's also the punishment of the nations because they all had us in captivity. They did what? They all had us in captivity. They all had us in captivity, correct. Isaiah chapter 19 and 16, let's go. Isaiah chapter 19 and 16. Came late, leave early. Let's go. Isaiah chapter 19 and verse 16. In that day shall Egypt be like unto women, and it shall be afraid and fear because of shaking of the hand of the Most High of hosts, which he shaken over it. Read it again. In that day shall Egypt be like unto woman. And if so, so what is that saying, uh, ladies and gentlemen? What does it say? Show me hand. What does it say when it says that Egypt will be like what? Unto Flaki. Unto woman. Unto woman. What does it mean? It's like doing, doing a, a woman labor? No, no. What does it mean? Oh. Read again. In that day shall Egypt be like unto woman. Egypt is primarily, it's, oh, the name of the country is usually the name of who? Uh, no, the name of, names of countries are usually named after whom? A man. Right, so if it's named after a man, then read it again. Come. In that day shall Egypt be like unto woman. See? So what is it saying? Go ahead. Um, uh, apologies, ladies, but it's saying they're going to be terrified. They're going to be like women. Men are going to be like women. Mm -hmm. yeah. They're going to be afraid like women. That's happening too. And when the men are afraid like women, what? Hope does the sisters have? Because the men are shivering and crying like women. And what's a woman going to do? That's what happened to us. Because they will be terrified. Let's go to Psalm 33 and 19. Let's deal with the famine. Psalm 33 and 19, let's read. The book of Psalms, chapter 33 and verse 19. Read. To deliver their soul from death. To do what? To deliver their soul from death. And to keep them alive in famine. See? To keep them alive in famine. Have you finished that? Yes, sir. Let's go, if you please, um, to Micah, chapter 4. Because the greatest deliverance is going to be done in Babylon. The greatest deliverance that we will see will be done in Babylon. Let's read Micah chapter 4 and 10. Let's read. The book of Micah chapter 4 and verse 10. Read. Be in pain and labor to bring forth, O daughter of Zion, like a woman in travail. For now shalt thou go forth out of the city, and thou shalt dwell in the field, and thou shalt go even to Babylon. There shalt thou be delivered, there in the Most High. Now, can you understand that? Do you get that? Start from the top. We'll go, we'll go back there. Micah chapter 4 verse 10. Watch this. Thing. Be in pain. Be in pain. And labor to bring forth. And labor to bring forth. O daughter of Zion. O daughters. So I'm speaking about Israel. 
Now watch this now, read. Like a woman in travail. Like a woman in travail. For now shalt thou go forth out of the city. Out of the city. That's speaking about 70 AD. Read. And thou shalt dwell in the field. Thou shalt dwell in the field. That's now speaking about 1619. Slaves. Come. Because that's what happened, right? That's right. Go on. And thou shalt go even to Babylon. Go even to Babylon. Meaning to be possessed by Babylon, which is the country that we became slaves in. Because remember, the slave ship didn't be, or, or slavery didn't begin right off the bat in the Americas. It started off in the Caribbean before it got to the Americas. Are you with me so far? Yeah. So that's a prophecy breaking down the steps that it would take to get us to where we are today. Now it's a hard scripture to, to, to understand. If you, that's why you've got to make notes on this. Otherwise, you'll read it again. You'll forget it. And then you'll ask me, and I'll say, oh, did I not explain that? So, what is it basically saying? Let's see if anyone has it so far. All right? So it said, well, what's the first part? What, then what's the latter clause of it that deals with the three areas? Who could tell? Go ahead and read it. Yes, sir. There thou shalt be delivered. There the Most High shall redeem thee from the hand of thine enemies. What, did you finish it? Yes, sir. All right, go back and read it again for yourself. This is Micah chapter 4, verse 10. Be in pain and labor to bring forth, O daughter of Zion, like a woman in travail. For now shalt thou go forth out of the city. Out of the city is your first clue. 70 A.D. Go on. And thou shalt dwell in the field. Working in slavery. God. Right? That's the hard labor of slavery. Now, where is that going to take place? Read. And thou shalt go even to Babylon. So it's going to happen in Babylon, in the Americas. Jeremiah chapter 16. 14. Go ahead. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 16, verse 14. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Most High, Read. that it shall no more be said, The Lord liveth, that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. Now, here's a pen. Watch it now. Read. But the Lord liveth, that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north. The land of the north, which is what? Babylon, America. Uh -huh. Jeremiah chapter 16, 14 through 15. Read 15 again. But the, but the Lord liveth, that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north and from all the lands, whether he had driven them. So it's led, but it makes the key focus on the land of the north, so that you know this is Babylon, the Americas. North America, to be precise. But then he finished it by saying, and where, and all the other places. Go ahead. So I, and whether he had driven them, and I will bring them again into their land that I gave unto their fathers. See that? So the clues are right there. Setting us up to understand that this pale horse situation has happened, continues to happen, and is getting to its climax. But you see, our people right now, we are more focused on clubbing, womanizing, smoking, drinking, drugging, all here, you know, smoking a blunt, you know, getting all excited that way. And that's why you find that in, in, in the tribes, we have different, different ways of playing out our end in terms of our, our, what we find our joy. A Friday night in, in, in the Mexican communities, we're gonna go and buy some drink and we're gonna drink ourselves crazy. Right. Friday night in terms of the, the, the so-called uh, 
our African American community. We're going to go out there and we're going to get ready to go out to whatever is, whatever music or club is, is going on and dress up a certain. It's madness. The other nations are not getting involved like we are. They're preparing because they know World War III is coming. Yeah. Yeah. And they know so far that they've even started buying land and building bunkers mm -hmm. and storing food there. You see them on YouTube teaching their, teaching their six year old and their 13 year old how to shoot with both bow and arrow and with guns. What are we doing? Israel does not know and does not consider. That's the Exodus script. <laughs> wow. Let me get that real quick. Yeah, get, get it real quick for me. Oh, yeah. No, we only have it. Go ahead. All right. And, and, and then we're going to go to Deuteronomy chapter 13. You good? No, I thought that was, I thought that was good. Oh, so. Uh, 8.6. Yeah. What's that precept? Get it for me, get it for me, get it for me. I thought we had it. Go ahead. Yeah, I know. Israel does not know and does not answer. Is that one? Hit me up quick. I got it. It's the book of Isaiah, chapter 1 and verse 3. The ox knoweth his own, and the ass his master's crib. But Israel does not know. My people does not consider. Does know what? Does not consider. We don't consider. Go to Deuteronomy 13 and 7, please. Deuteronomy, chapter 30, 30 or 13, verse 7. 13 and 7. Namely, of the gods of the people which are round about you, nigh unto thee, are, or, or far off from thee, from the one end of the earth, even to the other end of the earth. I'll go back. Deuteronomy 30 and 7. Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 7. And the Most High, thy Yahweh, will put all these curses upon thine enemies. So all the curses that we have suffered, now he's going to put it on them. Mm -hmm. Watch what he's going to do. Read. And on them that hate thee, which persecuted thee. Read. And thou shalt return and obey the voice of the Most High. Read. And do all his commandments, which I command thee this day. So all the curses are going to be on them because the curse that was on us that we would eat our own children. We we did we became cannibals. Mm -hmm. We ate our babies. Mm. Now they're going to do the same thing. So go to Second Ezra chapter two. Oh no, Second Ezra chapter fifteen, and we're going to read from fourteen on. Second Ezra chapter fourteen. Second Ezra chapter 15, mm. verse beginning at verse 14. Second uh, Ezra chapter 15 and verse 14. Watch this. Woe to the world and them that dwell therein, for the sword and their destruction draw nigh. So you'll notice that even in Russia right now, Russia has put out a national call telling their people how they should prepare themselves in case of war. That's, right. That's already gone out there. Has America done that? No. no. Because America is still trying to play the thing that they have nothing to worry about. All of the other nations are, are beginning to set themselves up for tragedy. They're doing it now. Russia is one of them, even China and um, North Korea, they, South and North Korea, they are preparing themselves and they're in a state of readiness. The newsman is not letting Americans know all this because they're trying to act like they've got everything together and they don't. That's right. Continue to read. 
For the sword and their destruction draw nigh, and one people shall stand up to fight against another, Read. and swords in their hands. Read. For there shall be sedition among men, and invading one another. They shall not regard their kings, nor pre princes, and the course of their actions shall stand in their power. Read. A man shall desire to go into a city, and shall not be able. This is why, I, I, there's a movie that I would encourage you to watch, it's called The Road. Hmm. It's a post-apocalyptic movie. It's called The Road. It's called The Road. It's a post-apocalyptic movie. It tells you, it shows the story of a, of, of a father and a son after the world has come to an end and everything has gone mad and they're trying to survive and as they travel, and I'm gonna, not going to spoil it for you because you need to watch it, they come across all manner of evils, people killing people to get to make them meat. So it's a whole lot of things going on. But it's, it's worth reading, but also watching, because it will enlighten you to what the future is going to look like. You know when we run, eventually, there will be some in small groups, some in large groups, and, and you're going to find those who are in a group, you're going to have the hardest time, because, because People are going to feel like um, they're going to give up, and you're going to have the desire to say, "Come on, let, let's 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 keep moving." And you're going to have to make decisions because one can have the rest of you all destroyed. All that time's coming. You all don't. <laughs> I, I know you're thinking. But it's a terrible time. It's down the road. Any questions from anyone before I go? This is the pale horse. Nobody, you're looking to pale yourselves. Well, I got a question now. I've been, uh, I just off and on, I've been looking. I'm, I'm looking for that verse where it said, God hates sinners because when you look in the. I'll, I'll find it for you later. When you look at anything else, you know what the love the sinner. Say again? When you look at all these things, you ask it in the in, in the in that thing, they all say that he loves the sinner. I know. You can't find anything Psalm five that counteracts that. Psalm okay. 5 and 5. Okay. In John 931. Okay. Oh, Alright, so let's get back to this. Let's read this Second Ezra chapter 15, verse 17. A man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able. For because of their pride, the city shall be troubled, the houses shall be destroyed, and men shall be afraid. Read. A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor. So don't think your neighbor's gonna, gonna do your solid. Mm -hmm. You know what your neighbor's gonna do? If they know that you do shopping every week, they see you coming with those grocery bags. <laughs> they're gonna know, I know they got food, let's go in there. And they're going to kill you. Why? Because they want that food for themselves, their right. wife, and, and their children. That's right. You see, can I put you on you? Finish yourself. But shall destroy their houses. But shall do what? But shall destroy their houses Read. with the sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. And for great tribulation. What's this? Um, Stay there, let's go to chapters 16 and 17. 16 and 17. Yes, sir. Second Ezra, chapter 16, verse 17. Woe is me. Woe is me who will deliver me in those days. So you remember what I just said? Some are going to feel like they want to give up. And you're going to try and encourage that person, but you're going to have to leave them. And notice what he said. He said, woe is me, woe is me. Who will deliver me in those days? Uh, Read. The beginning of sorrows and great mourning. That's Jacob's trouble. Go on. The beginning of famine and great death. The beginning of wars and the powers shall, shall stand in fear. Read. The beginning of evils 
What shall I do when these evils shall come? Behold, famine and plague, tribulation and anguish are sent as scourges for a minute. But for all these things, they shall not turn from their wickedness. So, so, so notice, with all of this, our people are still not going to want to pray and repent. Mm. Mm. They're still not going to repent. They're going to see all of this and still feel like Esau's going to make a way. Mm. Read on. Behold, victuals shall be so good, cheap upon earth, that they shall think themselves to be in good case. Read. And even then shall evils grow upon earth, sword, famine, and great confusion. Read. For many of them that dwell upon earth shall perish of famine, and the other that escape the hunger shall the sword destroy. Watch this. And the dead shall be cast out as dumb, and there shall be no man to comfort them. For the earth shall be wasted, and the city shall be cast down. That's why there will be no such thing as high-rise buildings. All of them will be torn down. Okay. There will be broken down buildings. All of these, when you go downtown, all of them are going to be torn down. The, the most high, the, the, that World War Three will destroy all of that, and people will be wandering around in cities trying to uh, make their way out. Let's go from there to uh, Proverbs chapter 1 and 26. Just, just five more scriptures and we're done. Proverbs chapter 1 and 26. The book of Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 26. Right, now you watch what the, this is what God is going to do. Read. I also will laugh at your calamity. What did he say? I also will laugh at your calamity. You will do what? Laugh at your calamity. Read. I will mock when your fear cometh. So, he, he, read the next verse, 27. When your fear cometh as desolation, and when your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when the distress and anguish co cometh upon you, then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. So he's letting you know that he's not going to answer them. And right now, some of the greatest people who are going to suffer this right now is in South America. Yeah. South America and Central America. They're going to suffer greatly Come. because they will not turn from Catholicism. They will not turn from Christianity. Oh, yeah. They will believe that, that um, the Pope's got the answer. That shows you just how messed up our people are. Right. And why the Father has to destroy. That mindset can't go into the kingdom. And I know people struggle with that, but it can't. He's going to destroy it. Yes, go ahead. Verse 29. For that they hated knowledge mm -hmm. and did not chose the fear. Read of it the, again, sir. For they that Salaki, for that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Most High. They hated the knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Most High. God. Did you finish that? No, yes, sir. All right, but from there, let us go to back to Second Ezra, chapter 16. Let's read on from 23. 16:23. Yeah. Second Ezra, chapter 16, and verse 23. And the dead shall be cast out as dumb, and there shall be no man to comfort them, for the earth shall be wasted, and the city shall be cast down. Three. There shall be no man left to till the earth Three. and to sow it. The trees shall give fruit, and who shall gather them? 27. The, verse 27. So that one man shall desire to see another and to hear his voice. For of a city there shall be ten left and two in the field which shall hide themselves in the thick groves and in the clefts of the rocks. So it shows you just how bad things are going to get. Let's go to Mark chapter 13 and 30. Uh, Mark 13 and 35. Mark 
the book of Mark, chapter 13, verse 35. Watch ye therefore, for ye know not when the master of the house cometh, at evening, or at midnight, or at the crock crowing, or in the morning. Read it one more time. Watch ye therefore, for ye know not when the master of the house cometh, at even or at midnight, or at the crock crowing, or in the morning. Read. Lest coming suddenly he find you sleeping. He find you what? Find you sleeping. He find you what? Find you sleeping. sleeping. Watch that sleep spirit on you. Read. And what I say unto you, I say unto all, watch. See, so he's telling us to watch. Come. He's warning us, but guess what? We're not taking heed. Come. He's, he's, he's warning our people. Get yourself together. This is a bad situation we're dealing with here. This is bad. James chapter 6, and then we'll, we'll conclude. James chapter 6. Uh, no, James chapter 4 and uh, 6. The book of James, chapter 4 and verse 6. But he giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, Yahweh resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. He does what? He give grace to give the grace humble. Giveth grace unto the humble. So we have to humble up ourselves. He said, he said, read it again, sir. But he giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, Yahweh resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Read. Submit yourselves therefore to Yahweh. Read. Resist the devil. Resist and, that spirit. Read. And he will flee and from you. He will flee. Read. Draw nigh to Yahweh. Get closer to him. And he will draw nigh to you. Read. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts. Ye double-minded. Ye double-minded. Last scripture, second, Ezra chapter 2 and 34. Second, Ezra chapter 2 and 34. In the Apocrypha, second, Ezra chapter 2 and verse 34. And therefore I say unto you, O ye heathen, that hear and understand, look for your shepherd, for he shall give you everlasting rest, for he is nigh at hand, that shall come in the end of the world. Salah. 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 I love that, that precept right there, because he's calling us heathen, because we have lost our first estate right there. Any questions? I know it's heavy. So it's been a. Stepping back, I think you said. I'm sorry? Yeah. What is that? You, you didn't write the precept down? Huh? You didn't write the precept down? I wrote that and I don't know which one I wrote down because I couldn't have been back. I'll show you. I'll show you later. Because people don't pray that it's a lot. I want to be able to show them. Go ahead, sir. Um, well, it's kind of a statement and a question because the question is I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm getting everything that we we're discussing today is part of the problem that is affecting not just Israel and the United States, but across the world, is it the, the construction of the strategies of those who sit in high places, you know, that, that keeps people in the condition that they are by constantly bombarding them with other alternatives as opposed to being able to, so that they can't hear. You know, like in other words, I, 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 I kind of want to say this, but I don't want to say this to you. Well, I, well, well, for instance, like the thing that everybody likes to say now, they're living their best life. Mm -hmm. I mean, clearly, it's not the best life, mm -hmm. you know, because they even got songs now that are stating that. And we parent Well, the reason why they sing those songs is because they have sold themselves out to, to Esau. Mm -hmm. You can't, you can't, as, I've heard Christians singing that song. Exactly. And if you're singing that song, you sold out to Esau. Because if you're living your best life, you call this life your best life, and, and, the, and the writer says that you have to hate this life, and the writer says in, in uh, 2 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, it says if in this life only men would have hope, there would be of all men most miserable. That's right. 
this life is not for you to, to have hope in. There's no hope here. Go ahead, sir. You know, I was just going to say, and exactly. And it's like those behind the scenes who studied our people, they know exactly what we like. And so of course they do. Remember, they studied our people right, going right back to the 1940s, uh, 1950s and 60s. They said, they said to the shops, they did a, 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 a film documentary and sent it out to all the businesses. They said, do you know that you, you're missing out on billions of dollars of untapped money? Coming from where? Coming from the so-called um, Negro people. And what did they do? They, 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 they made it all glossy up and they showed them moving into new real estate. They showed them buying furniture, they showed them buying cars, they showed them buying clothes, and, 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 and they made it more accessible for Negroes to get credit cards back in the late, uh, back in the mid 1950s and 60s. Before that, our people couldn't even get a credit card. And now, all of a sudden, they can get credit cards. What it was called, before it was called credit cards, it was called charge cards. Yes. So they would get charge cards. And what, what our people do? They were, they were upping themselves in debt. But that's what they wanted. And, and now, we believe that that's how you live the American dream. It's not. It's the American nightmare. Any other questions from anyone? Go ahead. Two questions online. Um, 2 Kings 2 and 12. 2 Kings 2 and 12. Mm -hmm. Officer uh, Ben asked, why did Israel rent their clothing in negative situations? Oh, uh, yeah. 2 Kings 12 two and, and 12. 2 and 12. 2 Kings 2 and 12. Go ahead and read what you got. The book of 2 Kings, chapter 2 and verse 12. Mm -hmm. And Elisha saw it, and he cried, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel, and the horsemen thereof. And he saw him no more, and he took hold of his own clothes, and rent them in two pieces. And the question is, why, why does Israel rent their clothes in negative situations? Because it, um, in that situation, it was tied to mourning. Mm -hmm. um, there, were, there were a couple of things that's traditional with mourning. One is to bow your head to the ground, take the dust and put it on your head. And they heap the dust over on, on their head. Uh, the second was to roll in the dust. And uh, the third was to tear their clothes. So when you saw them, you knew that they were in mourning. And, and you know, you left them alone. So if you saw a man in mourning, you wouldn't trouble him. If anything, you, you would bow your head or, or, or you would encourage him. Because remember, our people, we're very, we are an extremely spiritual people. And we are, and in our spirituality, we are expressionists. And, and so this is why when certain things was done, it caused people to see us and immediately know what we're, we're going through. So if a man, you saw him and he had dust in his head, you wouldn't see him and say, oh, he's a, he's a vagabond. No, you would you, see and, and, you, and you'd ha hang your head in respect or you would say something of encouragement because you know someone has just died and he's going through the sorrows of it. Remember when David's son died? To try and appease the Most High God, he went and he, he, he went and he went and took up his clothes, put on sackcloth, sackcloth I mean. and rolled himself in in the ashes of of of, of fire. Okay. He rolled himself in it, and then when the Most High um, spoke to him and said he will not restore his son because his son was was on the verge of, of dying at that point, and and then guess what he did? He got up. He changed his clothes, washed himself, and went about, and went, and the, and the servant said, how can he change so much? And he explained, because he, he would let them know, if I wrap myself in sackcloth and ashes and rolled in the dust to try to appease most high God, and he right. came to me now and told me he would not do it, no matter what I do, won't change his mind. Right. So I may as well get back 
to normality. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, when I, every time I think about that, I think, wow. But it lets you know just how spiritual we are as a people. There is no race on this planet that is as spiritual as Israel. Right. None. None. That's why we as a people, we have to be careful what we say. All right, so that was the first question. There's the second one. The second question is from Elder Fields. He asks, What's the name of the movie you refer to in the spelling? Rhodes. Rhodes. R O A D S. Rhodes. The road. Like the road. Yeah. And Officer Hugh says, or Van says, the book was even worse. Sorry? The book was even worse. The book was even worse. Yeah, well. Well, he's a literary man, so I'll take his word for it. Yes, ma'am. I have a question. Um, I can't find the, 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 the word and, and what book is in the Bible, but it says something like um, uh, it talks about it, it's saying, daughter of Zion, get out of Babylon, so yeah. you don't partake of their punishment. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, why are we here in Babylon? <laughs> That's a, good, that's a good question. This, it, 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 she's making a statement that in the, the scriptures it says the daughters of, 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 of Zion should get out of Babylon. Yeah. Um, when it's, and I think I know, that in fact, it's mentioned about maybe four or five times. So one is definitely Isaiah, one is in Ezekiel, the other one is in, um, I think it's Jeremiah. But, but, it, but here is it. <laughs> He's saying it as in remove yourself from the actions of Babylon. Because you see, we have become, you see, in the New Testament it, it's, it's worded a lot better. It said, be in the world, but not of the world. You can be in a thing, but not of it. What we are, we're in it, and we want to be self. We will do everything. Remember that the scripture also says this, that when they, Israel acted the harlot to such a degree that the other nations looked at Israel and said, how could you even sink to that level? Which shows you that us as a people, we can get really low. I mean, depraved low. That's in our nature. Remember, when we were building the, the, the um, uh, when our people were participating in the building of um, Babel, it is, it is written in one account that we had such a desire to want to kill God, we took arrows and we were shooting up into the heaven. Madness. But, here's, but that shows you how wicked we can be. And guess who we're following? Ham. So the, the removal is a spiritual it's, removal. Yeah. Right now, we cannot be moved. Some people, some of our people, by the way, have left America and gone to, um, gone to Israel. But there's a place, uh, what, what is that place in Israel? Huh? Demona. They're, they've actually gone to Demona, Israel. They're living there. They're treated just as bad. Yeah. Just as bad. Now one would say, well, would not the Most High help them? In, well, he is helping them. But they have jumped the gun. Okay. He said that he would deliver us, not we deliver ourselves. So going there does not change the conditions of our curse. Right. You see? You're welcome. Yes, yes sir. John 17, 14, the sign of prayer that he said that he would that, that he would not would take us out of the world, but he would keep us from the evil. Yeah. So isn't this like the same John, thing? Let's read that. John 17 and 14, 15. And 15. Let's read what it says. The book of John, chapter 17, and verse was it 15? 
Yes. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. So even though we're going to be in it, he's going to keep us from the things that happen whilst we're in it. That's a powerful verse. Good verse. Any other questions from anyone? Yes, my sister. Um, Good question. Good question. Good question. Good question. That we're going to answer. I'll answer part of it now. But at the festival, at the Feast of, of Tabernacles, man, we're going to cover that. That's right. Real. We're going to show you. We're, we're going to bring um, Officer Yu uh, from, from uh, Dallas. He's going to come down and, and we're going to show you how to have uh, certain things together. Uh, in terms of a gold pack, a gold bag, and all of those things, because it's going to affect us. Now, there are some camps who say, oh, we don't need all of that. Okay. i leave you and your own. As for me and my house, this is what we're going to do. Or it's nice American, this is what we're going to do. We're going to make sure we have everything together. Because, man, when the time comes for us to run, we're going to have to run. And if Yahweh isn't, hasn't turned up yet, we have to be um, moving in a way that we are aware of what's going on around us. And we have to be prepared to protect ourselves. In that day, man, a man will come and, and see you as a woman and will want to both kill and rape you. And you have to be prepared to do what it takes to live. Now, Puzzle said, well, I'm not going to kill anyone. That's okay, sweetie. We just see you over the other side. <laughs> but if he gives you the strength to put this person away, he gave you the strength to put the person away. Did we not just read? That? That's, that's why I spent so much time in, in, in Second Ezra showing that nothing happens unless he wills it to happen. So if you had the, the ability to overcome an enemy who was trying to break and both kill you, you kill that's the most high doing what he's doing. He's not going to let that happen. But yes, ma'am, we, we, we're already working on that and we're going to give you some much detail yeah. um, 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 over the tabernacles. That's right. But we may even spend a couple of days on it. Because it's just too much going to one day, but we may um, do part of it one day and do part two the next day and so on. But it's going to be very informative. This year's tabernacle, I want us to leave feeling very assured of ourselves and very empowered by the word as to how we can navigate ourselves during um, those chaotic, chaotic times. Because some of us will go through that. There's no doubt about it according to scripture. Any other questions from anyone else? Feel free. Okay, well if there's any more questions on my man. Um, um, there's comments, but there's no comments? questions. Okay. You want the comments? Uh, if it's positive, if, um, if it's not, then okay. no thanks. Um, uh, Elder Phil says, and Negroes are buying into the anti-gun <laughs> of the West. <laughs> Meanwhile, the heathens are stockpiling. Yeah, the, the, the heathens have definitely stockpiled. Uh, but, but see, but they're going to stand their ground. They're going to, they're building their bunkers. Um, and if you go online and you look at some of the things that they have, um, they have, they're going to war. They've got some serious artillery yeah. and ammunition. Um, uh, there's one particular, I won't mention his name, but he has a community where he has, but he has everybody, he calls everybody uh, Israel there. Mm -hmm. And he has guns and all of those things. And they're going to, and they, they've got their little land, they actually work it. Mm -hmm. And, they, and they're, going to, they're going to fight. And they'll be putting down some firepower. And they have stockpiled a whole lot of stuff. And this happens to be a Jake 
with a lot of uh, Esau and other groups that's with him. Mm -hmm. <coughs> he is online. Um, I won't mention his name, but, so, but that's what he does. But he's he's got it. He's got it twisted a little bit. Big time. What one thing I was thinking about when you were talking when we were reading Sirach 39 and 28 would talk about the different types of elements that mm -hmm. are used for vengeance <coughs> against us. I'm sorry, Miss Apple. The different types of elements that are used for vengeance uh -huh. and to, to scrounge us. Mm -hmm. I heard a news report uh, a couple days ago about uh, China and they're saying that the majority of medications now are made in China. Mm -hmm. And so um, we are USA is dependent upon China for all of their medications, mm -hmm. and hence there's been some periods when there's been some contamination, mm -hmm. things of that nature. Mm -hmm. And they're saying that if the medications are stopped mm -hmm. through China, hospitals will close in the U.S. in yeah. just a matter of days. But but to see, uh, and 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 this, uh, by the way, that's a very good a very good question. Um, well, it's both a question and a statement. But here's the thing. All of that is part of the Chinese um, Cold War. They have been setting that up for years. They know that when the time comes for them to shut down what they have, they'll have America where they want America to be. Yes. And America is too naive at this point. Because you see, that's what, that's what happens when you keep you keep drinking the Kool-Aid and you keep thinking, you know, we can do this and we, we can be undefeated. No. There are some countries that, look at the recent situation that happened because of what Donald Trump has done with the, uh, with the, um, the, the garbage. China takes a great deal of American garbage mm -hmm. because they recycle the plastic. They turn back Something, something like 24 gigantic ships with, with, with their garbage. And America now is in a situation they don't know what to do with them. Mm -hmm. They know they can't drop it into the sea because they drop it into the sea is going to cause a pollution problem like no one has seen. And they can't bring it back inland because they don't have the, the, the facilities to, to recycle it. And the Chinese knew this. You see, so it, it, it has caused America to start to look at the fact that we have relied upon China too much. That's right. And China now realizes that they are in the, 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 the seat that they can dictate certain things. Mm -hmm. right. but, with the, but, but back to what you said, as far as those medicines are concerned, when China stops, oh, it will change a whole... America, yes, its hospitalization system will collapse almost immediately. Elder Phil says the drugs and medicines that come from Moab are loaded with pig parts, too. And, and, and Elder Phil, repeat what he just said. He said drugs he said and medicines from China, from Moab. Moab are loaded with pig parts. There, there's a lot of, of, of swine uh, parts um, mixed into it. Doesn't surprise me. Doesn't surprise me now. Any other questions from online or from any of you here? Yes, uh, uh, just a statement. You know, we've mentioned about Chinese going and invade countries, not invade, but going to different countries and they set their own police and all that. They have done so in Eastern Europe now, uh, probably in uh, Serbia. And what they're doing the same thing. I don't know if that's just the way they do it. It was on the news. They now have their own, their Chinese police is policing Serbia. Well, look, look the, the, when, when they started setting up police over in Africa, I, you know, I, I, I threw my cap in the fire at that point because it's done. Because, you know, how is it that you let another country come in and start policing you and arrest you yep. and all of that? Mm. It makes no sense to me. All right. Uh, to, uh, to all of our, oh, yes. Um, Elder Fields asks, was a harp machine used to cause the hurricanes to stall over the Bahamas. Um, say, say again? Yeah. Was a harp machine used to cause the hurricanes to stall over Bahamas? Yeah, I, I heard about that as well. Did you hear about that, ladies and gentlemen? Yeah, because remember, uh, um, it is believed that 
America has certain um, devices that can control the weather. And so the question that Elder Fields is, is asking, if I'm understanding correctly, did they use some of the, one of those machines to store the uh, the hurricane over the Bahamas to cause the devastation that it did? But remember, if you, if you saw that 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 picture that I, I sent some of you, that was a massive, like we've never seen before. And if they had control over that, then you can imagine why the Most High is going to really now set the very things that they've been using against them. But I, that's the whether they did or not, I, I, I cannot tell. I don't know. Could you send that out for us again? Could you, so could you send that picture to us? Send it back, send it to the yeah, okay. I'll send it out again. I'll send it out when we're finished, so you have a copy of that. All right, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters. To all of our um, brothers and sisters who follow us on the Sabbath, uh, we want to send out a hearty blessing from the Ahabashi and the shine on your lives. Um, please do come together with us to celebrate from the uh, from October, October the 30th through to October the 21st. Come and celebrate with us the Feast of Tabernacles right here in Houston. If you happen to be close by and you're following us, come on down. If you have, uh, if you're away and uh, or out of the city and you want to travel in, come in. We'll do our best to facilitate you um, because we want to have a wonderful uh, Feast of Tabernacles this year. Yeah, are willing. So on the behalf of myself and the Millennium City Church and uh, all the members here, uh, we want to say to you, Yahweh, Ba'ashiyem, Yahweh Shai, Salah, Hallelujah.